Mary would never seek this. Mary would recognize this derogates from the proper form of worship that has been established in the pages of the Bible and hence involves us quite simply in idolatry. And we hear the other words of people in regards to Mary. If God is angry with a sinner and Mary takes him under her protection, she withholds the avenging arm of her son and saves him. Why did Paul say in Colossians chapter, or in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, for it is by Christ Jesus that you are in him. It is by him that you have your salvation. Why? So that you're boasting maybe only in the Lord. My friends, I submit to you that the Roman Catholic doctrines of Mary are without basis in the Bible, our historical novelties in many cases were often denied by many down the history of the church. They are enforced solely by the authority of Rome that Rome claims to have, have no binding power upon any Christian person whatsoever, but most importantly, they do what the true Mary would never, ever, ever want done. They distract people from the purity of worship of Jesus Christ and of Him alone. All the objections aside, all saying, oh no, it's just a demonstration of it. When you put someone between the redeemed soul and the Redeemer, you are no longer talking about New Testament Christianity. You are talking about a perversion of it. And hence, the Catholic, Roman Catholic doctrine of Mary detracts from the all-sufficiency of Christ by giving us a different mediator, a different Redeemer, a different King in Heaven, one that does not exist. Thank you very much. Your response? Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to just hold up for people a little booklet called Facing Up to Mary, written by Father Peter Gilquist, who had been an evangelical Protestant and then converted to Eastern Orthodoxy. And so I just want to make it clear that the great devotion to Mary that what uh, uh, Mr. White calls Roman Catholics, is shared by Eastern Christians and is deeply rooted in the piety of the Eastern Church. And uh, uh, if someone would ever listen to the beautiful liturgy of St. John Chrysostom, you know, what Mary is, is, is spoken of as more exalted than the cherubim and more sublime indeed than the seraphim, uh, then we could understand that this is not just a Roman Catholic preparation. But beyond that, uh, I'd like to say that, first of all, I, I, I don't see how we can look into people's hearts and say that those who are saying such prayers, as Alphonsus Liguori wrote, are being distracted from Jesus. This notion of abandonment to Mary, taught by Saint Louis de Montfort in True Devotion to Mary, and uh, taught in another sort of way by Saint Alphonsus Liguori, has as its goal a deeper union with Christ. The motto in Latin was, ad Jesum per Marium, to Jesus through Mary. Now we might ask, why do we need to go through Mary? Well, Christ came into the world, the eternal Word of God came into the world through Mary's unique cooperation. The very flesh that was taken by the eternal Word of God was taken from this beautiful Jewish girl. That blood that was shed for our redemption on the cross of Calvary was given to the eternal word of God by Mary. I remember once reading a little booklet by a Protestant, I won't mention his name since he's very well known, but he said, well, Mary was a wonderful person, but there's nothing in scripture to indicate she had any role in our redemption. Well, I think being mother of the eternal word of God was at least something. It was a role. You see? So that's why we are so uh, devoted to Mary. And again, the warning is, if you're going to be devoted to Mary in such a way that you're distracted by, from Christ, no, that's not true devotion to Mary. That's what's taught in Lumen Gentium. That's what's taught by St. Louis de Montfort. That's what's taught by St. Alphonsus Liguori. Why then do some people turn to Mary to go to Christ? Well, I think uh, Francisco Suarez, the great uh, uh, Jesuit theologian, uh, explained it this way, and I'm just paraphrasing. He said, her purity and strength makes up for our deficiency. In other words, when we ask Mary to pray with us 
and to intercede with us, then she strengthens our poverty and helps to bring us to Christ, strengthened by her prayer. Now, would Jesus object to this? No, I don't think so, because Jesus was a, 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 a good Jewish son, and he was following what is said in the, in the Ten Commandments to honor your father and your mother. You see, now his father was the heavenly father, and his mother was Mary. And in fact, the word there could be translated, glorify your mother and your father. So Jesus uh, wants to glorify his mother, and he wants to love her and give her these special privileges. But we have to remember what makes Mary great is her humility. Hey, the great poet Dante put it so beautifully, umile e alta più che creatura, more humble and more exalted than any creature. So in having Mary as an, exem uh, as an exemplar or as an example, we know how to approach Christ in true humility and faith. Thank you. James, your response? I simply wish to read to you in evidence of how distracting the doctrine of Mary is from true and pure devotion to Christ, a few words from Liguri. There is no doubt, St. Bernard adds, that Jesus Christ is the only mediator of justice between men and God, but because men acknowledge and fear the divine majesty, which is in him as God, for this reason it was necessary to assign us another advocate to whom we might have recourse with less fear and more confidence, and this advocate is Mary than whom we cannot find one more powerful than with his divine majesty or one more merciful towards ourselves. A mediator then was needed with the mediator himself. I hardly need to comment on that. The error of it is plain. Be comforted then, O oh, you who fear, I will say with St. Thomas of Villanova. Breathe freely and take courage, O wretched sinners. This great virgin, who is the mother of your God and judge, is also the advocate of the whole human race, fit for this office, for she can do what she wills with God. Most wise, for she knows all the means of appeasing him. Universal, for she welcomes all and refuses to defend no one. St. Anselm, to increase our confidence, adds that when we have recourse to this divine mother, not only we may be sure of her protection, but that often we shall be heard more quickly and be thus preserved. If we have recourse to Mary and call on her holy name, then we should be if we called on the name of Jesus our Savior. And the reason he gives for it is this, that to Jesus as a judge it belongs also to punish, but mercy alone belongs to the Blessed Virgin as a patroness. My friends, the words stand by themselves. This Liguri was raised the position of a doctor of the church, not just a saint. He is a doctor of the church. If these words are false, 20 times the congregation of sacred rites looked at, this, at his works, at his writings before he was canonized as a saint and then raised to doctor of the church. If Rome does not come out, I submit to you, if Rome does not come out and say, this is blasphemy unheeded, this is blasphemy of the highest rank, we deny this. If they simply say, well, we can't tell you whether you have to believe that or not believe that, Rome is by that very action demonstrating she has no knowledge of the truth of Jesus Christ. No person could possibly hear these words and not say, wait, wait, Jesus is the media. Fearing Jesus, why would you fear Jesus? He's borne your sins in your stead. He sent his spirit to dwell within. How can you possibly think such blasphemous thoughts about him? How can it be? Remember, it is not my purpose today, though it would be something we could do in the future, to look at every one of these doctrines and demonstrate that every single one of these doctrines is biblically inaccurate, every single one of these doctrines is historically countermanded by numerous references, I have all that material before me. Remember what the thesis is. The Catholic doctrine of Mary detracts from the all-sufficiency of Christ. I am in the enviable position of simply reading what is said. The words stand on their own. Any person with hearing has to go, wait, Wait, all arguments aside, when you tell me that my prayers will be heard more quickly through Mary than coming to Jesus because he's a judge, you know nothing of the one who is our hope. You know nothing of the one who is the fountain of all mercy, Jesus Christ and him alone. 
that detracts from the all-sufficient